Now, in today's episode, we shall be examining the god Moloch or Moloch and the weather he is the god of child sacrifice as the Bible claims. Is Moloch or Moloch the god of child sacrifice? <laughs> or is there more to the story than Mr. Is that something we're missing? Watch out. So, who is Moloch? Or who was Moloch or Moloch? Now, Moloch was a god, a deity mentioned several times in the Hebrew Bible, especially in connection with child sacrifice. Uh, several places in the Old Bibles, Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, speaks about the Israelites worshipping this God and making sacrifices of children to it or to him. The Bible refers to Moloch as a god of the Ammonites. Ammonites were the descendants of Lot, uh, the nephew of Abraham. Um, and the Bible tells us in Genesis that um, the second daughter, or the two daughters of uh, Lot, slept with him and uh, gave birth to the nations of Moab and Ammon. So the Bible tells us that Moloch or Moloch was the god of the Ammonites. We will see later if this uh, categorization is true because the god of uh, Ammon is more known as Milcom. So we shall see whether Milcom is the same as Moloch and whether in fact Moloch was the god of Ammon. Now the name Moloch is actually a Hebrew word for Melech which means king. So literally Moloch means king. However, the Bible in many places forbids the worship of Moloch and the sacrificing of children to Moloch. Leviticus 18.21 and Deuteronomy 18.10 both prohibit the sacrificing of children or what he calls passing children through fire to Moloch. And that was prohibited in the Bible. Leviticus 22-4 prescribes a death penalty by stoning for anyone who makes a child sacrifice to Moloch or anyone who passes their children through fire as a sacrifice to Moloch. Zephaniah 1 verse 5 similarly forbids the worship of Melech or Molech. So, there was wide condemnation of the worship of Molech in the Bible. However, despite this, the worship of Molech was very, very common, very prevalent throughout Israel, amongst the people and amongst the king, beginning from King Solomon, who we are told was the wisest of them all, and the one that built the temple in Jerusalem for Yahweh. Now, this Solomon, we are told in 1 Kings 11, 5-7, that he did not follow the ways of David, his father, but followed the gods Ashtoreth, Asherah, and Molech and build temples for them all over the place. 
So beginning from um, um, Solomon, they worshipped. They began to worship Molech and began to offer sacrifices to Molech. King Ahaz, King Ahaz, we are told in 2 Kings 16 verse 3 and 2 Chronicles 28 verse 3 that this king did like all the other kings of Israel, worshipping the gods of Canaan and sacrificing his son in the fire to Molech. So basically, he engaged in child sacrifice to presumably the god Molech. Now remember it says, this king did like all the other kings in Israel and worship Molech and offer child sacrifice to Molech. 2 Kings 17 verse 17 2 Kings 17 17 tells us that Israelites as a nation were in the habit of sacrificing their sons and daughters in the fire. It's a cultural thing. They all did it. They were all neck deep in it, sacrificing their sons and their daughters in the fire. 2 Kings 17.17 17. Then we are told in 2 Kings 21 verse 6 that King Manasseh sacrificed his son as a burnt offering as well. King Manasseh sacrificed his son in the fire as a burnt offering. 2 Kings 21.6 Similarly, King Ammon the son of King Manasseh followed the ways of his father in all respects and also in worshipping and sacrificing his own children or his own son to Molech. 2 Kings 21 20 to 22. 2 Kings 21 20 to 22. Now, the practice was so pervasive, so widespread, so universal, that when King Josiah, a Yahwist king, came to power, he sought to end this practice. And we are told in 2 Kings 23 verse 10 that King Josiah attempted to destroy the place called Tophet, Tophet is a place in uh, the valley of Hinnom where the sacrifice of children to Molech took place on a wide scale. So King Josiah attempted to destroy this place of child sacrifice, um, but apparently he failed to stop the practice. So see 2 Kings 23 verse 10. Now, because, like I said, this practice was very common, very prevalent, very widespread, the prophets were very uh, outspoken against it, and uh, they cried, they mourned, they lamented, and they condemned uh, the sacrifice of children to Molech. In fact, Jeremiah called Tophet in ben -Hinnom, he called it uh, <coughs> um, a place of slaughter. In fact, it is this, that place of slaughter, Ben Hinnom, that gave birth, um, gave rise to the concept of hellfire, as we shall see in a different video in times to come. Right. See Jeremiah 7, verse 30 to 34. Um, Jeremiah. 49, 1 to 6, Isaiah 57, verse 5, Ezekiel 23, verse 37. All these places were condemning the worship of Molech and the offering of child sacrifice to Molech. So, so far, so good. Because it would seem that the prophets of Yahweh, 
um, the Yahweh's king, Josiah, were all against offering sacrifices to Molech, and they tried to stop it, and they spoke against it. Josiah himself took steps to destroy the place of sacrifice. And that would suggest that uh, child sacrifice is abhorrent <laughs> to Yahweh, that Yahweh hated child sacrifice. But is that true? Is that the case? Now, it would seem that contrary to Yahweh hating child sacrifice, he actually likes child sacrifice. He actually decreed child sacrifice to himself. Apparently, what perhaps was annoying to Yahweh was when the sacrifice is given or made in the name of somebody else or a different God. But if it is made in his name to him, apparently he was happy with it because the Bible tells us that he, that the Yahweh himself, made a decree or made decrees about child sacrifice to Yahweh. You don't believe that? You think I am making this up? Okay, let's go to the Bible once again. Exodus 13 verse 2. Exodus 13 verse 2, uh, then 11 to 12, then Exodus 20, 23, or 29 to 30. In these places, the Israelites were ordered by Yahweh himself to consecrate and give over to him their first male offspring of both man and animals. I will repeat it again. The Israelites were ordered by Yahweh or Jehovah to give over or to consecrate to him their first male offspring of animals and human beings. Go and read Exodus thirteen twelve, Exodus um, then thirteen eleven to twelve. Sorry, I will repeat it. Exodus thirteen two, then eleven to twelve, then Exodus twenty two, twenty nine to thirty. Why did Yahweh make that decree? And the Bible explains this in Exodus chapter 13, uh, 14 to 15. And I will read Exodus 13, 14 to 15. In days to come, when your son asks you, what does this mean? That is, what does this sacrifice, child sacrifice, mean? Why do you do it? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord, i.e. Yahweh, brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go. Yahweh killed the firstborn of both people and animals in Egypt. This is why I sacrifice to Yahweh the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. Because he saved our firstborns in Egypt. He now required us to give them to him. Leviticus 27, 28 to 29. 
says that all these four sons you devote to me, you consecrate to me, they cannot be redeemed, they cannot be ransomed, they are to be killed or sacrificed to me. Well, not to me, to Yahweh. <laughs> and this explains why Abraham was ordered to sacrifice his son Isaac, his first son by his wife, despite the fact that it took him a long time to have that child. Genesis 22, verse 2. Then Elohim, or God, said to Abraham, or to Abraham, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. On a mountain I will show you. Kill him and sacrifice. Pass him through fire. Burn him as a burnt offering. Now we are told this story in the church as a story of uh, faith, of obedience. Abraham believed God uh, and uh, obeyed God and was willing to kill his own son as a sacrifice. But they don't disclose the main issue. Which is, why would Yahweh order Abraham as a mark of, as a test of faith to sacrifice his son? And why would Abraham be so willing and so eager to do it if sacrificing of children is not something they were used to doing? If you look at it critically, you find it's a practice they were accustomed to. And therefore, Abraham knew that because Isaac was a first son, he belonged to Yahweh. He has been consecrated to Yahweh. And he cannot be redeemed unless, of course, Yahweh himself decides not to take the sacrifice and redeem, and redeem the child. So why would Yahweh require the sacrifice of firstborn sons or children? Let's go to the Bible again. <laughs> I don't have the answers. The answers are in your own Bible. Go back to the Bible. Now, the Bible tells us that Yahweh decreed this child sacrifice in order to horrify and defile the Israelites because they abandoned him and did not obey his commands. They were always going after other gods. As we saw in previous videos, they went after Baal, they went after Asherah, they went after uh, other gods of Canaan. Ezekiel 28, uh, Ezekiel 20, 25 to 26 explains why while Yahweh prescribed child sacrifice to himself. So I gave them other statutes that were not good and laws through which they could not live. I defiled them through their gifts, the sacrifice of every firstborn, that I might fill them with horror, so they would know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel 20, 31, 
continues. When you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your children in the fire, when you pass your children in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. Remember, he said in the previous one I saw, we saw, he said in um, verses 25 to 26, I gave them this order, this decree to sacrifice their children in order to horrify and defile them. So when they do it, he says in verse 31, when they offer this child sacrifice to him, they defile themselves. So Yahweh or Jehovah ordered them to sacrifice to their own children to him, to spite them, to horrify them, to defile them. And it is clear from the Bible that when the Israelites who are making these child sacrifices, they apparently believed they were doing it to Yahweh. After all, it's in their law that the firstborn belongs to Yahweh and must be sacrificed and cannot be redeemed. So they saw the sacrifice of their first sons as a befitting gift to Yahweh. Please go to Micah 6, 6 to 7. Micah 6, 6 to 7. It says, With what shall I come before Yahweh and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will Yahweh be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body? For the sins of my soul. Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the son, for the sin of my soul? Micah 6 6 to 7. Furthermore, the Bible tells us that in that place, in that valley of Hinnom, in the place called Topheth, Topheth, where the Jews, the Israelites, were burning their children as sacrifice. <laughs> well, for this, the Bible tells us that Yahweh himself ignites the fires, provides the flames for the burning of these children. Isaiah 30, verse 33. Isaiah 30, verse 33. Topheth has long been prepared. It has been made ready for the king or ready for Molech. Its fire pit has been made deep and wide. The fire pit, the place to burn these children, is big, it is wide, it is deep, with abundance of fire and wood. <laughs> the breath of Yahweh, like a stream of burning sulfur, sets it ablaze. The place is prepared, all the wood, all the materials are there in the deep and wide hole. And now the breath of Yahweh, like a stream of burning sulfur, 
sets it ablaze, lights the fire, bring on the children, and dump them in the fire. So Yahweh was providing the fire for the sacrifice of children to Malak. So, to whom then were the sacrifices of children being made by the Israelites? Is it the god Molech? As the Bible claims, they call it the despicable god of the Ammonites. Or is it actually to Yahweh himself? We've seen that Yahweh decreed child sacrifice to himself. We've seen that uh, the Jews believed they were doing it for him. We believe, we've seen that uh, Yahweh himself is called king. <laughs> he lights the fire in the place of sacrifice. We've seen he decreed the child sacrifice as a way, he says, to defile or horrify the Israelites and show them he is the Lord. So, who is the recipient of this sacrifice if it is not Yahweh himself? Now note, all the references of, to all the references to Molech as the god of Ammon, as the god of uh, child sacrifice, we are all in the Bible. In the Hebrew Bible, written by Hebrews, the term Molech is actually Melech in uh, Hebrew, and it means king, and is a term used also for Yahweh himself. Isaiah 6, 5. So I said, Oh no, I am doomed. Every word that passes through my lips is sinful. I live among people with sinful lips. I have seen the Malek. The Malek. Yahweh. Shabbat. Oh, Yahweh Almighty. I have seen Malek. Yahweh Almighty. Isaiah 6, verse 5. We've seen also that Abraham was ordered by Yahweh, the ancestor of the Israelites, to sacrifice his first son, and he was willing to do so without hesitation, without argument, without question, showing that it was customary as a practice. Yeah? I'm going to discuss this particular issue in a different video in more details. And there are other instances in the Bible of human sacrifice, many places, which I will expose in due course. And don't forget that in the Bible it is very clear in the Old Testament or Jewish or Hebrew scriptures that Yahweh loved burnt offerings, burnt offerings, both of animals and both of children, as we've seen, and of course other human beings. So a burnt offering is a way to reach out to approach Yahweh. He loves it. But there is no evidence outside the mentions in the Bible of child sacrifice to the God of Ammon, to Moloch, or to Milcom, rather. Malcolm, the god of Ammon, there is no evidence that actually the Ammonites were sacrificing children to him. Encyclopedia.com says the custom of burning children for Moloch or Moloch is mentioned several times in the Bible, but it is not clear if the references are to the Ammonite cult and this god Milcom. And there is no positive evidence that the sacrifice of human beings to Milcom was practiced in Ammon.
What conclusions can we draw from this analysis? Well, the first one is that the claim that God gave the Israelites the land of Canaan because of the idolatry of the people of Canaan is nonsense. <laughs> because the Israelites were no better than the Canaanites. As a matter of fact, there is no account of abominations by the Canaanites. All the abominations were seen were by the Israelites in the Bible, who purport to be worshipping the gods of Canaan. So everything the Canaanites were supposed to have done, they did it. Second, the Israelites, the ancient Israelites were no better than other ancient peoples in terms of worship. Ah, they tell you people did the child sacrifice, human sacrifice in Africa, in this place, in that place, in this place, and that God's chosen people. Well, you've seen they engaged in child sacrifice on a universal scale. And they also engaged in the sacrifice of all the human beings to Yahweh, to their God. And they committed many other atrocities under the decrees of Yahweh. And these atrocities we're going to examine in due course in different videos. So there's no basis for saying they are special. They are not. They are, if not worse than other people, they are the same as other ancient peoples. And thirdly, the claim that Yahweh is the only true God or the true God is false. Because from the accounts in the Bible, he is probably worse than others. Or the other ancient deities of other lands. Because as you've seen, this, uh, he likes uh, offerings, child sacrifice, human sacrifice, and and as we shall see in subsequent videos, he decreed many atrocious things for people to do in his worship. He was a mean guy, if you think about it, but we shall see in due course. So the claim that he was the only true God or the true God is not correct. It's unfounded. Thank you for watching. I mean, I found today's video very sobering and very uh, thought-provoking. I hope you did too. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you are new, please subscribe to the channel to help us um, spread information and help us share the video as well. Your comments are welcome. Yeah? Until I see you next time. Thank you for watching and bye.